Tennis at Wimbledon. This is one of the biggest events in the cabby calendar. So I decided to go to Wimbledon to hopefully show you how the taxi rank system works. Because Wimbledon is out on the limb a little bit, there's a few curious features here. Wimbledon Tennis Club sits within the London borough of Merton. So it's normally yellow badge sector six that get the privilege of being able to rank here, as well as us green badge drivers. But because of increased demand, they actually allow Sector 7 drivers to come into this area to rank if they wish to do so as well. Sector 7 covers like Richmond, Kingston and Hounslow. There's a couple of other interesting and different things that go on with Wimbledon. First off is a taxi sharing scheme. Because there's often way more people than there is potentially cabs in that area, and because the roads and infrastructure can't really support that many vehicles to come in and out of the area, there's marshals at the different gates of the tennis clubs and they organise all the passengers into what areas of London they might be going to. If there's six different passengers who are all going to Chelsea, it makes sense to load up one taxi and make them all go to Chelsea. So addresses in the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea in the area bounded by Cromwell Road, Brompton Road, Sloan Street, etc. If it's in the daytime tariff, it's £10 fixed fare. It's great for those passengers because they're only paying like, you know, £10 or whatever to get from Wimbledon to Chelsea. So it's really good value. But it's also good for me as a driver because I've only gone to one area and I've earned 30 quid for that, which the meter would probably be around that mark, maybe £25, something like that. So I can potentially earn a bit more because of this system as well. Also, there's a couple of different ranks depending on which kind of job you want. Because the yellow badge drivers can only be picked up in their designated sector, they don't really want to be going into town. So there's a rank that basically goes into town or there's a rank that sort of stays within local jobs. Now, as I turn up to Wimbledon, you can see some of the closures and different traffic measures that have been put into place. I have a word with this marshal here, but he doesn't really seem to have a clue. So I just head down towards the tennis club and kind of find my way. Every year I've gone there, it's always been a little bit different. There will usually be some kind of one way system in place just to ensure that all the traffic flows in a certain direction, it doesn't get held up. I have a word with this yellow badge driver, just asking which rank he goes into town. I don't really want to stay down here and be doing local jobs. I just want to get one nice, good job into town and I'll start my shift from there. Is that the one for back into town, mate? Or He lets me know it's on the other side, so I pull away. As I pull off, he actually toots his horn and gives me a flash of the lights because a job comes over to him that wants to go over to Fulham. And of course, him being local, he doesn't really want to go to Fulham. They're actually after Atalanta Street off of Fulham Palace Road. I'd never actually heard of it before. It's a bit of a bizarre name, really. The most difficult part of this run is just getting out of the tennis area because, of course, all the sat-navs aren't going to be updated for this. So I play it super safe. I come all the way down Church Road, go back to Wimbledon High Street, and that way I'm going to be completely clear of it. I get stuck on this mini roundabout for a considerable amount of time as the traffic marshals seem to be doing a fantastic job. I eventually manage to squeeze through and continue on with the journey. And it's always nice driving through Wimbledon because all the local businesses and the town always dress up for the occasion. You know, you'll notice like these tennis flags, all the shop windows have tennis paraphernalia. It's a real nice touch. So we go Parkside, forward Wimbledon Parkside, forward Tibbetts Corner, leave that by Tibbetts Ride. Forward into Putney Hill, forward Putney High Street, straight over Putney Bridge. Forward Putney Bridge Approach, forwards into Fulham High Street, comply by the roundabout, and lead by Fulham Palace Road. Here's a fun fact on Fulham Palace Road, and it's something I learned from the examiner, Mr. Harvey, in one of my appearances. On the west side of Fulham Palace Road, the roads going from south to north are actually in alphabetical order, right into Atalanta Street, and we're there. Just before four o'clock, managed to drop them here in the corner. That's probably the first and last time I'm gonna be going to Wimbledon this year. Thought I'd go there to give you guys a bit of a sneak peek of how it works, because as you saw, you know, going up Putney High Street, up Putney Hill towards Tibbetts Corner, just that whole area, especially coming into the afternoon, into the evening, will just be so ramo because you have all the different private hire options, taxis and everything going there. You'll likely get a job out there in the morning to drop people to the tennis. It's highly unlikely that you'll get a job out there in the evening and then simultaneously be able to pick up. I've maybe done it once in a previous year, but 
because the dynamics of it, it's not how it works. So it's there, out on uh, a limb. People sometimes ask me, they, they write in the comments, they say, oh, do you ever go to the London Stadium or do you go to Tottenham or the O2? Because there's always loads of people looking for cabs. You know, look at my City Airport shift video. Even if City Airport was completely empty, there was no one there, I've got to think, right, how long is it going to take me to drive out there? What's the likely job I'm going to get? And then how long is it going to take me to do that job? It's basic business, really. In this case, I've driven all the way down to Wimbledon. I've got this job for £24. A little bit of traffic getting there, a bit of traffic getting out, and I'm now sort of stuck in this kind of Fulham area. If it's busy in town, then I'm going to hang about in town. You know, do one job to the next and just quickly get onto another job and go again. End of the day, you're a creature of habit, right? Whatever working pattern works well for you, you just stick with it. There could maybe be some outsized rewards from working down at Wimbledon. And even if it does work out better, just the stress and sort of going through the traffic and then not being in a regular, comfortable environment. I like being in town. I like doing the, the little mini jobs, just bang, 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 one onto the next. Fingers crossed anyway. Let's go. So I head back into town along the New King's Road past the Kebab Kid. You might have seen that in my previous food video. And as I get to Parsons Green, I have this lady hail me down. It's absolutely chucking it down. So what a great time to find a taxi. She just hops in and just says, Chelsea Bridge, please, driver. It's a super simple run. We just follow it forward down the King's Road, watching out for this recumbent rider. I mean, he's not really wearing any bright visible clothing. And the guy is probably lower than my bonnet. Anyway, being really careful of him. I trundle my way along the King's Road. Builds up in traffic a little bit here by Lots Road, but eventually I get my right into Edith Grove. From there I can bear left into Cremorne Road, and that forwards into Cheney Walk, which then eventually becomes Chelsea Embankment. Now, interestingly, Chelsea Bridge is the only bridge out of these along this stretch of the River Thames, which you can turn right onto. As we're going over Chelsea Bridge, I ask the lady where she wants to drop. She's after an apartment here within the Chelsea Bridge Wharf area. This is probably one of the worst places to drop off. I absolutely hate this because there's a cycle lane on this east side carriageway of Queenstown Road, just after Chelsea Bridge. But then you have those magic wands, those poles along the way that obviously separate the cycle lane. So I can't drop by the magic wands because the door could open into the cycle lane. Um, it gives the cyclists a false sense of security. They might not be paying attention to a passenger getting out. Also blocks the road. But if I go beyond, then there's a crossing there. So I can't go too far beyond. But then I don't really want to block the cycle lane. I stopped there once. Um, it's a double yellow line. And I had a lady come past my window and she gave me hell on this bike. She tells me, you can't stop on a double yellow line. It's against the law. Just to clarify it, Taxi and private hire can drop just about everywhere. And that includes in cycle lanes, whether that's got a dotted line or a solid line. They can drop in bus lanes. The only exceptions are zigzags by crossings because that is against the law. No one can do that because that blocks the view of the crossing. But everything else, you can drop them there because if I've got to get a passenger out with a wheelchair, you know, you've got to make reasonable accommodations for that. And you can't even drop across the road in Battersea Park because there was a point there when security guards were taking down number plates of taxi drivers and, well, doing something with them, possibly giving them fines. So it just seems like everyone's out to get you and no one makes provisions for this. Now, certain aspects of driving a taxi are never going to be convenient. But there is one thing that is, and that is why food. Now, no purchase necessary. This month, Y Food are giving two lucky winners of this channel £95 worth of Y Food. For context, that looks like this. That's 24 bottles of their super popular fruity editions. So that's strawberry, mango, peach, and tropical. They're super tasty, convenient, and they're healthy. So that's why I always carry them in the cab for those in betweeny meals that I might normally miss or skip entirely. To be in with a chance of winning the 24 bottles of their fruity edition, just fill out the Google form below. You don't need to be a previous purchaser and you don't need to purchase as part of this competition. Two winners will be chosen at random and that's exclusively for this channel. That Google form will only be live from today, but it will close on Friday the 18th of August. So you've got to act quick. If you can't wait until then to find out if you're a winner anyway, then go to Y Foods website using my exclusive link down below 
or the discount code taxi-youtube and you'll be able to get 10% off their full offerings right away. YFood have been supporting the channel now for over two years and it's through their product and direct sponsorship how I'm able to keep this channel alive and kicking. Now, let's get back to the shift. As I'm kind of close to the Pimlico area, I head to the Lung. Quick convenience break before being on my way again. I'm having a hunt in the St. James's area and in front of me, I see fellow cab driver and friend, Mark Morris. He's actually conducting a tour with some guests here. Fun bit of trivia is that Mark Morris actually won Taxi Driver of the Year three times. He's the most decorated driver of this. This was a taxi driver charity where taxi drivers could enter and compete to be the taxi driver of the year. It's nice to see regular drivers out and about. It just makes the job feel, you know, a little bit less lonely, especially in times like this when I'm desperately hunting for a job. Eventually make my round to Parliament Square on this northern side here by the most photographed phone box in all of London, I pick up an American family. They get in and just say, South Moulton, please. Some people do this, they have a habit of like omitting the last part of the address when that's like the most salient bit. And South Moulton isn't too bad because if they mean South Moulton Street or South Moulton Lane, they're next to each other. It's just near New Bond Street, it's off of Brook Street uh, and Oxford Street. But if they done say, Mortimer, you got Mortimer Street, uh, well, I'm thinking like Marlebon area. You got Mortimer Crescent, we'll see that one later on. You've got Mortimer Road in Islington. You got Mortimer Market, WC1. Mortimer Square, W11. So if someone just got in and go, hey, take me to Mortimer, please. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Simple run, we get our left into Parliament Street, up Whitehall. I'm gonna go through King Charles I Island and leave that by Coxburgh Street. Because of where I am, I'm thinking I'm gonna run it up Regent Street, but en route, I can kind of overhear them talking as I'm going up Regent Street St. James's. And they're going, oh, I don't know. Maybe we, maybe we just don't confuse our driver, I don't know. Half Moon Street, yeah, no worries. Yeah. They say, oh, driver, can you take us to Kiku Restaurant on Half Moon Street? I'm like, yeah. I didn't have the heart to tell them about the knowledge or, you know, anything like that. But, you know, anything within this central London radius most certainly isn't going to confuse me. And this actually makes the run much simpler and far less painful than driving up Regent Street. Left Piccadilly, right Half Moon Street, set them down there. Nice. <laughs> I've had it where people can't get out of the cab properly because they don't understand that the door opens as a suicide door, I get that. He said, how do I pay? Is, is your credit card machine up front or is it in the back? I said, oh yeah, sir, it's just, it's just in the back. And I'll show you exactly what he did. This is what he did. So he was sat on this flip seat. There was a few other people in the back as well. And he says, oh, pay in the back. Oh, okay. Oh, it's on a touch screen. And he stares at it for a few seconds. <laughs> He's like, oh no, it's just a... And then I just say, look, it's actually, sorry, sir, it's just the one by the door there. Never had that before. Now, we'll continue on. Whole way here. I know it's just as I came into Half Moon Street, concierge was walking that way. All the concierge just saw there's a guy at the Ritz who was trying to hail cabs down. So I think there's a lot of work about. Let's just get cracking. I have to get back out onto Piccadilly and into St. James's Street before getting my next job. This guy hails me down and this is the instructions that I hear. Redwood Mansions, Chancery Square. And I am like, whoa, I, I haven't a clue, right? Sometimes the mansions, the name of the mansions or whatever, can give away where it is. So like Delaware Mansion might be on Delaware Road, for instance. Y you can sort of draw clues from that, right? Carving a redwood. And it's Chancery Square. The only Chancery I can think of is obviously like Chancery Lane. You know, like Chancery Square. What can make it difficult as well is that a square can refer to the actual layout of the road, like the road name. So... Grosvenor Square, Hyde Park Square, or it could actually refer to the actual development. The building itself could be called a square. So it makes it confusing whether you're referring to a road or a building. And I'm saying, I say it back to him, I say Chancery Square, and he's like, yeah, this is another mistake as well. If someone gives you information, if you just repeat it back to them, they just agree with you. They're like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And I'm thinking, and I ask a bit further, I'm like, whereabouts is it? And he's like, oh, it's just off of Kensington High Street. I'm like, the only thing I can think of is St. Mary's Gate. There's a development in there with just so many different, like, ambiguously named blocks and squares and things like that. And yeah, probing further, it says, yes, yeah, it's off of Marlowe's Road. 
it does astound me why some passengers need to be so cryptic. Just say, St Mary's Gate, Marlowe's Road. Bosh. And it turns out, it wasn't Chancery Square. It was Chantry Square, or Chantry Square, however you want to pronounce it. But just look at all the blocks within this development. I mean, if you know any of them, give yourself a pat on the back. So we get heading there and run it all the way straight through. I can either come in from Cromwell Road or come in from the top. I aim for the top because it's a shorter stretch and Google says that there's less traffic on Kensington High Street. So we go for that. As we head up to Kensington High Street, traffic gets a bit heavy. And after all the confusion of him getting in and me trying to work out where he wants to go, he just bails on Kensington High Street. Luckily, I can escape here and get to the other side of the road where just by the Royal Garden Hotel, I have this lady hail me down. She's after Waterloo. Nice. There's an old joke. It's like a meme online where a cabbie asks the passenger, oh, are you after Waterloo Station? And the passenger says, well, I'm a little bit late for the battle. As we pass the All Nations shelter on Kensington Road, she asks roughly, how long is it going to be? It says about 30 minutes, hopefully quicker. I kind of wince at this. How wrong could I be? Now, the Royal Albert Hall was originally going to be called the Central Hall of Arts and Sciences. But when it opened, Queen Victoria proudly claimed that she wished to call it the Royal Albert Hall of Arts and Sciences. And of course, today we just know it as the Royal Albert Hall. Traffic builds up quite a bit here by the Hyde Park barracks, but we eventually managed to get through it and that isn't the worst part of the journey. We go past the Mandarin on Knightsbridge. You can see there's two concierges looking for taxis. They must be really struggling to find an available taxi. And we use the Hyde Park corner slip road here. So we need to peel off because I'm going to be using the Palace Roads. My intended route is that I'm going to go through the Palace Roads. I think Birdcage Walk might be shut. So I'm going to use the Mall, drop down via Horse Guards, come out via Great George Street and that sets you up perfectly for Westminster Bridge and Waterloo. When I was on Tothill Street earlier, which is the street that kind of runs parallel with Birdcage Walk, that was quite busy. And that generally happens when that road is closed. So continue along the Mall and I start to see people U-turn in front of me. Crap, the Mall is shut. So the options are, I can either turn back round, but I know as Birdcage Walk is shut, it's not going to be great going back in that direction. So I go up Marlborough Gate and I'm going to use Pall Mall. This is easily the worst bit of the journey. We go around that little roundabout near the bottom there by St. James's Palace. And to get from here at this point on Pall Mall to the Canadian Embassy down the other end of Pall Mall, it's about 14 minutes. That's absurd. And then a lot of work trying to get through Trafalgar Square. And then along Whitehall, forward into Parliament Street, and I have to keep left so I can get the left into Bridge Street. Honestly, I've spent a lot of my life in this left-hand lane to turn left onto Bridge Street. It's just another awful bit of traffic in London. In fact, I've probably done it a couple of times, but it's probably quicker to go down around Parliament Square and then over the bridge. But if you do it for someone who's not used to London, maybe someone who's visiting or is a tourist, they generally think you're trying to rob them blind if you go around the square to set them up for Westminster Bridge. So we just sit here and have to wait until our turn to go through these lights. Going over Westminster Bridge, I get a strange look from the concierge at the Marriott County Hall. He's looking at me with a look of, what? Why well, you got passengers on? I need a cab. Come on. Anyway, we work it through. I get through to the drop off. It's great. There's no cabs there and there's a big queue of people. The drop off is actually beyond this taxi rank. They're doing a lot of work where the taxi rank and the drop off is. But the issue with this is that you can't then come back to the taxi rank. You have to go all the way around. But in this circumstance, the police officer is saying, look, drop here so you can pick up some passengers and so is the taxi marshal as well so i stay out the way allowing any other cabs that can get to the rank to get on the rank and let my passenger out quite embarrassingly this job took almost an hour it was over 40 quid that is just absurd you might be wondering well tom like that that job took you like you know about an hour 40 quid what are you complaining about the ideal condition would be that in that time i could have squeezed in three shorter jobs earned more money and had better passenger satisfaction. 
And also I would have been less stressed because I wouldn't have been stuck in traffic. Straight on to the next job here at Waterloo. And I get to load up this lady who's got a mobility scooter. Now it's not too heavy a mobility scooter. So I'm actually able to lift this up and put it in the cab. She is after made of ale, specifically Mortimer Crescent. And thankfully she gives me that last part because if she said Mortimer Street, Mortimer Square, Mortimer Market could be a completely different location. And I'm gonna use a lot of the roads I've already used today because I've already seen the conditions of them. Over Westminster Bridge, I can go around the square, get into the park, I'll use horse guards because I know that that westbound bit of the mall is still open. And then from there, I can either cut through Mayfair or work my way up onto Park Lane. And annoyingly, Birdcage Walk is shut entirely. They've put this sort of gate in place here. What normally happens if they shut Birdcage Walk, you can still normally get horse guards and come up into the mall that way. So this forces me down even further. Super annoying. So my idea is that I'm going to get to Buckingham Gate because I know that Constitution Hill is open. I've got a wiggle through Tothill Street. This is a bit nicer than going on to Victoria Street. We go forward into Broadway, going past St. James's Park tube station on the left. Whenever you see these kind of big concrete, blocky, modernist style tube stations or buildings in London for that matter, it's most likely going to be Charles Holden. He done Senate House. Uh, Leicester Square, Hoban Station, which was in the last video. Yeah, that's Charles Holden. Forward Petit France, left Palmer Street, right Caxton Street, and we get the right onto Buckingham Gate. It's proper lashing it down here. So that helps explain some of this traffic. Once we're through though, all the palace roads are clear. up Constitution Hill and around Hyde Park Corner and work our way onto Park Lane. After the initial kind of bus lane bit of Park Lane, it's reasonably clear today. Work our way all the way up there, around Marble Arch and up into Edgware Road. This is flowing nicely until we get to the Sussex Gardens area. There's a bit of temporary lights going on here. It takes a little while to get through, but from there, we're just gonna carry on going straight up Edgware Road. There's no other way really to run this. Man, it's proper wet today. Perfect weather if you're a duck. There's certainly no tennis going on at Wimbledon in these conditions. It might be wet, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna be getting a job straight off the street in Maid of Vale. Heavy, man. Heavy rain, heavy traffic, heavy workloads. Jeez. You know, what can you do for those out of action right at that key time of day, you know, half five going home time? There's not a great... And in the rain and in the height of summer. All the things that generate a lot of traffic. Summertime, so there's a lot more coaches coming into town. There's a lot more of those open top buses that are, you know, going slow on the tourist side of things. If it's raining, more people might be opting for cabs and private hire and stuff rather than cycling in so that's more traffic and then of course rain reactions are slightly different people are a little bit slower a bit more hesitant they're not as well able to see road markings and things it all just has that knock-on effect of traffic all these little things no wonder why it's busy on the streets is because there's going to be a lot of cab drivers like myself that are stuck on jobs for too long because you can't get there or there's too much traffic and the result you have people just crying out for cabs no doubt the other mob are going to be uh, obscenely surge pricing. Right, there was a lot of hands, even right up on Maida Vale on the way here. Head back in and usual, really, see what we get. I reckon it's going to be Edgware Road before I grab anything. Maybe I could have a little uh, skimmy through St John's Wood. I have to get all the way to Park Road before I get my next job. People assume that you're coining it in or making loads of money when it's raining. It doesn't matter how many people in London want a taxi. I can only have one job at a time. My meter is not influenced or affected by the rain. There's no surge pricing applied to it. And also it's usually kind of a hysteria associated with the rain. So if it's raining all day, people come prepared. They'll have their rain jackets or they won't come into town or they'll just opt for different options to ensure they remain covered and sheltered. And usually it's Sod's law that once you drop the job off, you're miles away and you can't find anyone else who wants a cab. Just the way it goes. So, lady's actually hailing me down from the crossing, but I'm quick to sort of beckon her down Park Road a little bit, and I find a safe space where I can pull in and pick them up. They're after Oxford Street. 
Of course, I'm really quick to quiz her and ask whereabouts on Oxford Street. She's actually off the shoe on the eastern arm of Oxford Street, just east of Oxford Circus. So turn back round, straight down Park Road, and I'm going to bear left on Allsop Place. This brings us out by Madame Two Swords. And we're going to do a right into Park Crescent, setting us up for Portland Place. Now, Portland Place is somehow one of those roads where I just seem to hit red light after red light after red light. So I don't really want to go along there. I'm going to use Devonshire Street to cut us onto Great Portland Street. Just less traffic lights moves a lot easier. All the way down, left onto Oxford Street and drop the lady there. Now we're in luck on Oxford Street whilst it's raining. That's where the work is. As soon as I drop the lady off, I'm quick to pick up another group of passengers. They're after Colber. My first thinking is Colber on Sloan Square, right? Nice, fanciest restaurant. The other confusing one is, is Coba, which is Rathburn Place. So it's not far from where we are at all. So it could be that, that's a Korean restaurant. The option they want, which is Colbert, which is a Persian restaurant on Porchester Place. So they're all likely options. Well, of course, ask them for the location. Ask them if they've got it written down because, you know, you're dealing with accents and assumptions. Maybe the Middle Eastern people want to go to a Korean restaurant or a French restaurant today. It, you know, it's nice to assume they just want to go to the Persian restaurant. In this case, they do. One of the old stories a lot of taxi drivers tell each other, a gentleman got in and he asks for Tutin Tutin Common. Oh, it probably means two in common. So apparently the driver drove him all the way to Tutin Common, like you know, quite far south. And the guy's like, No, no, I wanted Tutin Common. He's like, What were you talking about? And he pulls out a guidebook and it's a picture of Tutin Carmoon. He wanted to go to the British Museum, Tutin Carmoon. So, Colbert to get to Tybernia. Turn around, full length of Oxford Street. I'm gonna go right into Orchard Street and left into Portman Muse South. It just cuts out one of the traffic lights. Right Portman Street, and depending on what the traffic lights were doing, will dictate which turns I take. There's a few mews around the back here, which I will sometimes use, but because I can see the lights are green, I'm gonna go through Portman Square and get my left into Upper Barclay Street. Forward into Connaught Street, right into Porchester Place, drop them on the right-hand side here. Easy. As it's still raining and there's no other real strong intel, I head straight back to Oxford Street. I don't have to go far, I get to Marks and Spencers and have this gentleman hop in who wants to go to Harrington Gardens. Because we're not far enough along for North Audley Street, we just turn here and use Marble Arch. Straight down Park Lane, round Hyde Park Corner and past Knightsbridge and down past Brompton Road as always. Brompton Road by Harrods is always filled up, especially in the height of summer, so a little bit of traffic there, but we're through out into Furlow Place, Cromwell Gardens and Cromwell Road. Much lighter traffic than in my previous video where we got stuck here, taking a gentleman to pretty much the same destination. Left Gloucester Road, right into Harrington Gardens, and we drop this gentleman on the left here. As I'm quite close to the petrol station, I use this as an opportunity to fill up. This tiny, tiny shell is possibly one of the only shell petrol stations without a toilet, so good one to bear in mind. And in the skinny section of Old Brompton Road, I pick up this job going to Kensington Church Street super simple we just spin ourselves around we go up queen's gate queen's gate is one of those wonderful stretches of road that i've never experienced traffic on it it always flows super well all the way up turn left into kensington road back past the all nations forward into kensington high street right kensington church street and she just wants to be dropped off the churchill arms here on the left nice don't have to go far, we get to the top of Kensington Church Street and into Notting Hill Gate. These ladies give me a little meek hail, which I nearly miss. Thankfully I don't, and manage to pick them up. They want to go to the Marlebon Hotel. They struggle to say Marlebon, just like any other decent person. There's going to be someone in the comments who's like, Oh Tom, it's Marlebon, blah 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 blah. I literally mentally flip a coin every time I say it. Now, Marlebon Hotel is on Welbeck Street. Now, Welbeck Street is one way south. And you can only get to Welbeck Street using New Cavendish Street, which is one way west. And you can only get to that bit of New Cavendish Street, from where we are, using Wimpole Street, which is one way north. You get the idea. Basically, you've got to do a little bit of a shimmy to drop them into Welbeck Street. So from here, we just continue all the way along Bayswater Road. You can wiggle this through Tyburnia, but because Bayswater Road flows super nicely, there's a bus lane all the way along there. 
I'm gonna use this until I have to pop up into Marlborough. So I use Great Cumberland Place. Right Seymour Street, Ford into Portman Square, Ford Wigmore Street, left Wimpole, and this is where we start our shimmy, left New Cavendish Street, left Welbeck Street, and set down on the right. I head down onto Wigmore Street, and quite quick to pick up this lady who wants to go to the Danubis Regent's Park. One of those kind of iconic names, and it's a weird little hotel marooned out near Regent's Park. It's quite good, I guess, if you're at Lord's Cricket, perhaps. There's a whole multitude of ways that we can get this run started, but I use one of my favourites, which comes from a missing piece run I learnt back on the knowledge, because it cuts out a few traffic lights to get yourself started. You do a right into that continuation of Duke Street, around Manchester Square, leave that by Fitz Harding Street, and using Baker's Muse to get you Robert Adams Street. Then from here, we can just go straight up Baker Street. That joins you onto Park Road, and Park Road is what we need to get ourselves onto Lodge Road, where we'll find the Danubis Regents Park. You have to go up this little ramp here, you put into the forecourt, and drop her nearly there. I come back down Park Road and Baker Street to have a hunt for a job, but as I'm pretty much on the Marlborough Road, I'm going to call it a short shift and an early night. If you enjoyed, then I really recommend watching another shift video. I'll leave one on screen for you now. But before you watch that video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and join my free weekly Sunday summary email over here.